Today I am working on a 2013 Chevy Impala. It's got a 2.5 in it. It has the direct injection. Yep, 2.5. So it has the uh, 2.5 in here. Uh, there's some drivability problems with some lean codes. Now that was lean when I got it originally a while ago. Uh, so we checked it out. I checked it out. Um, pulled some codes. Took a screenshot and uh, concluded that it was the high pressure fuel pump and um, I'm going to show you why but the car was drivable because there's two fuel pumps on this vehicle you have one in the back it's a um, it's not the I want to call it just the, the suction pump like a scavenger pump it then it feeds onto the high pressure mechanical pump and then you have the direct injection system beyond that that produced the high pressure fuel so let me show you that right quick and uh, we'll tear into it, <clears throat> get the uh, pump replaced. Now we do have, got a part here uh, that we bought off of Rock Auto. It should be Rock Auto, unless you got it off of Amazon. I'm not sure, I'm not gonna show you the box there, but. Uh, so it should be accessible, but we're gonna look at some PID data and I'm gonna show you how I determined that this high pressure pump is faulty. if I can get logged in here. Hopefully it'll communicate with it. It's pretty far. Yep. I wonder if it'll have a delay. So we got 2013 Chevy Malibu. Oh, that's an Impala. Malibu. Forgive me. Forgive me. It's got 2.5 in there. Non-turbo. I got a lot of stuff that I work on, so I'm pretty sure it doesn't justify me not being internet smart, but you know, things happen. Anyway, so how's people, how are everybody managing the coronavirus? You know? Yeah, me, I'm, I'm still here, I'm still kicking. You know how I feel about it. I say it's BS, but, uh, you know, people die of pneumonia on a daily basis. But, I digress. Um, I don't know, and I'm not certain about this heating module, so it's not a big deal. need the engine data so all the other information that it may need is irrelevant at the moment this is real time here the master scope is pretty fast with Chevy's um, at least it communicated with it uh, seat memory I don't know I'm just gonna hit something that's not what we're primarily focused on but then Maxi Maxi, uh, Maxi assist is pretty good here. So we're going to go to diagnostic uh, control unit. We're going to go to engine control module. And we're going to um, uh, start stop system not equipped. If I recall properly. Uh, trouble codes. Alright, so we got a fuel pressure regulator performance. Uh, fuel rail pressure low during engine cranking. Uh, fuel system lean and uh, fuel pressure regulator one control performance low pressure. Now all these are all these are synonymous. These all make perfect sense uh, for them to be grouped together, and it all points towards the mechanical fuel pump. Uh, being that, let's see, if, let's see if there is any freeze frame data. Being that uh, the car runs perfectly fine with the the uh, primary fuel pump, it's not going to run with the secondary high pressure pump because of it producing inadequate pressure. Let's see. So we got long term fuel trim of 35%. It's trying to add 35% of fuel. 89% load, and it's trying to add 35%. That's quite a bit there. Ignition cycles. Let's see here. See if we got anything dealing with the high pressure. Here we go. Uh, fuel rail pressure, and we have a runtime of zero. We don't we don't have a runtime. Grams per second, 4.3. And we know. Let me see if we can do a conversion on this psi. All right. So let me see if we can decipher the pit data. Um, I don't know. We'll call it kilometers. So miles, 
distance since last malfunction, distance since first malfunction. But that doesn't tell me about the current condition. So let's just let's just go off the load condition. So we got 89% load. Uh, the car she was obviously giving it throttle uh, to put it in the 89% load. That's almost 100% there, and it it wanted it wanted to add 35% fuel, but couldn't do such. So the fuel pressure sensor here it was only making 64 psi. Mind you, uh, the internal combustion is a well over 200 psi. So 64 psi is definitely not going to uh, overcome just basic compression. And we had a we do have since we had an 89% throttle or 89% uh, load we had a uh, 4.3 grams per second which this car at idle <clears throat> or about 500 rpm should be around 2.5 grams so it's doubled that so I'm pretty sure it was probably around I want to say um, 2000 rpm fuel rail fuel rail pressure sensor it was 101 and I think I think that's about it. So I think this, the fuel rail pressure here is going to be our pressure going to the uh, direct injection. That should be the fuel pressure going to the pump there. Now the car doesn't have any type of knocking, popping, pinging or anything. I, I really think this is just a, 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 a poor pump. And if we look at the live... Oh shit, why am I going there? Why am I going there? Why am I going there? <clears throat> Let's go to engine. Get some. Let's go see if we can find the fuel pressure sensor. I'm pretty sure it has a desire. Here we go. <clears throat> so we have. Uh, let's isolate those. Turn these into PSI. So we have the uh, fuel pressure sensor. Excuse me, reading at 60 PSI. So that's our baseline fuel pressure to feed into the mechanical fuel pump. And we have that reading only at 87 PSI. So that's the maximum it's capable of putting out. Yeah, so. And uh, if I give it a little gas, I'm, and just in the past, just take my word for it, it would climb up to about uh, 99 to 100. It was at one point at 100, see like that. Went to 100 and it just fell off. So I feel really good about just going ahead and putting a new high pressure fuel pump in here. And uh, we can visually inspect it when I get it out. <clears throat> but uh, all right, let's, let's tear into it. All right, I got a T27, that's what it feels like. Knocked out so I can hit the lake. I know we're supposed to be social distancing and things, but uh, yeah. I'm one of those black guys that just you know, quite rebellious. And I like to fit stuff. So. You don't have a kayak, please buy one. Like one of the best investments. Let's see what happens. The labor time on this is supposed to be uh. An hour. Uh, we're sitting, sitting in the back over here. Let's see if we can get a better view. Right. You could only see how I got lights positioned because there's no metal. Everything is like plastic or aluminum cast. So uh, I think what I could do uh, get a little more room. Pull this tin right here out. And I can move this bracket, and I'll have X and better access to the pump. And that's like I gotta take a cover off. Oh shit! There's a tin right here on the side, and I don't know if there's any other tin. This thing is hot. Gosh! So I put a little bit of give it a little water bath so it'll sweat a little bit. Again, this engine was literally just running got here get my 
a little closer. Let's take this one off the side here. Very carefully. Let's try this again. So I got the uh, quick connector off. I'm not sure what I recorded there. And um, the, it wasn't that hard. You just flare out the ends here, these ears. There's everything to hold in place. Well, this one, these I pinched down. The other one, the green one, I had to flare out. So the green one is here is on the valve cover. All right, moving on. There's a... I used a stubby little ratchet wrench to get to the uh, tin on the bottom. Not a big deal. And I'm going to show you how that looks. It's close to the throttle body. If you follow this plate all the way down, you'll you'll stumble upon it. So I'm not sure what other people have done to get this off because I have not done any investigating on how to remove this. Just looked up labor time, and here I am. Right, let's see what happens. I think I got under right, the connector here. Pull that back. Push out. Look like I can just pull it out here. Unless there's something else on it. I think this insulation is probably what's holding it on now. Makes sense. If we'll cooperate. I'm pretty sure it'll be a whole lot easier if I take this <laughs> the air duck off. But I haven't had to need to do that yet. I think I'm missing one bolt. I feel like I am. Hold on. Alright, so there's there's another one down here under this hose. Uh, it's, it's kind of far in there and I'm not going to try to get it on camera because it's very tight and there's plastic fitting so I got to be very mindful not to break one of these this plastic uh, outlet here because excuse me it's going to be a it's going to be one of those days all right how I'm getting the how I'm getting the bolt in the back on the bottom I'm just using the 3 8 so I got a 10 point I mean that's the first thing I get my hands on it's not on tight so, I mean, I can get it, I can go through between the bracket and the outlet housing and easily access the bolt and uh, just break it loose. So, it's not that bad. I mean, I got the leverage of the 3 a ratchet, so it's, it doesn't make it that difficult. I can get my hands around here. And uh, walk it loose, so that's the plan. Let me keep at it. So change of plans. Once I broke it loose, I was able to get a little wobble extension on there with a 10 millimeter. Go above the hose here and hit the bolt and screw it off easily. So this is definitely a lot more simplistic than try to work it loose with the 3 8 drive there. So I'm, I got plenty of room away from that hose and that plastic outlet the way I'm not putting pressure on it and I can just simply walk it off so what's out now oh, I'll just grab a magnet no big deal and what I mean there's a lot of plastic on here there is a lot of plastic all right let's see ouch still burning myself all right here's the bracket so that was the bolt by the throttle body, bolt hole. Here was the, the one that was accessed at the top, and then here's the one at the bottom I was kind of fighting with. Now, I know there are a lot of safety precautions with removing this pressure, 
uh, the fuel lines and the high pressure fuel pump. Ouch! Golly! Damn that burn. But uh, I'm gonna trust the judgment of. The I don't know what I missed, but the camera is just doing some funky stuff. So I'm gonna trust the judgment. This is what I could get out. It's the insulator right there. So I'm gonna trust the judgment of the, of the uh, computer and trust the fuel system to be low on pressure uh -oh. drop my camera So this is the low pressure line here. Ideally, you'll want to uh, pull the fuel pump fuse, start it up, and allow uh, the injectors to drain off the system. I didn't do that. so. I think I got the right fit in here. It's a quick connect. So I'm gonna find out real quick what happens when you don't follow directions. Like we're just from the pressure hot heat causing the fuel to expand no big deal so now we got access to the high pressure fuel pump you can see it up there those two bolts off on the side here. No, it was a Mazda. I know, Mazda was made by four. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see that video of my neighbor um got his stuff stolen. You see how they got his sped off? He yeah. just peeled out. I mean, I mean, he was gone. I know. He was gone. I was like, damn, the motherfucker gone right here. I was like, man. And I was literally here, man. That's crazy, yeah, because yeah. you said, you said you like, was I in the garage. Even, when you sent me that damn video, you had, you know, timeline. You got a little finger that, like, looked Yeah. Like, and so that, that was even better because, like, it made you look, you know. Yeah, it made you look. Yeah. I'm going to keep breaking these little clips up because my phone keeps saying it's overheating. I didn't think it was that hot out here today. I got a little ratchet wrench getting the uh, right side of it facing inside the car. I guess we're going to, like I said, it, there was no... There was no noises coming from this. This car is still hot, man. There's no noises coming from here, so I'd imagine the pump, the plunger, is probably just inefficient. I'd imagine the bolts will be a little easier coming out because it's hot. I'm like, you can run them out a little bit, then you have to use the wrench to break it loose. Keep on running it out. Damn it, boy. These hard spots. It probably would be a lot easier if this intake tube was off, because I mean, you could probably get something like a driver back there. I'm gonna see how long it'll let me ride out for it over here again. I got this one last bolt. 
and I'll have it removed. Um, I don't have any rags under here. Also, I do need to break this line loose on the side before I completely remove it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Crack the line going to the high pressure fuel reel. I'm going to remove it from the high pressure unit. So basically, as it sits like this, I'm going to remove this one at the bottom. Let me figure out what that is. So I, I'm going to use a 17. I can get everything to hold in place. Let's see if it's still recording. So I'm using 17 uh, little thumb ratchets. These are these are not that big, and I was, I'm using an 18 millimeter. Just getting on the uh oh, getting on the inside there, and I'll here we go. Exactly where I was referring to. And I just cracked the line a little bit. I can hear it bleeding off down at the bottom. And I'm gonna finish removing. Finish removing the line. I should be able to take it all the way out now. Alright, let me get that bolt out. If I got enough room to I swear man, nothing wants to hold in place. Uh, Camera don't want to record because it's allegedly too hot. Magnetic light don't want to hold in place. All right, let's see if we got an oil. I might need to see if I can break it loose at the rail too. Just stick my so I can stick my finger in the back here and get a little more leverage pick up. Oh yeah, she gargling. It's a lot of heat, man. It's causing that fuel to boil. Alright, so yeah, I got plenty of room now. Alright, we're going to lift this up. Here's the baby. I can't put this down. I know it's... The cam pushing down on that spring there, and I know I'm not going to be able to push down on it. Um... Everything, evidently things are not going to let me do as I need to because the environmental circumstances are not allowing me to record. So I want to get this back in there and uh, we'll just look at the live data because this phone again is just it, it's just overheating, keeps shutting down on me. But I mean as long as we got the main stuff out, how to remove it, um, we took off the plastic breather here, the shield for the insulation for to access the pump, remove the two bolts for the pump, and the uh, 18 millimeter uh, fitting that goes to the high pressure rail there. And of course, we move the uh, low side pressure with the quick disconnect tool. Let me uh, do our first startup. I tried to prime the system, but unfortunately, it kicked over. Oh, well, it rotated a couple times, it didn't really fully kick over. So, I'm gonna see if it'll start up. So we're running. Let's look at uh, let's go look at PID data. Oh, my dumb ass. I was like, why sound like that? All right. Uh, so we got all the boats in there. Yeah, we're good. All right, let's look at PID data. Let's back this light off. Let's go to engine. All right, everything uh, running selected for the live. What the hell? All right, okay. All right. So we need to find the fuel pressure. Let's look at our fuel trim. Long term, it's pretty high. It should drop. So short term, it's taking away 11%. So that's a good sign. It's taking away. So our long term is dropping. It was at 19, so I think we got it fixed. And this is going to be the determiner here. Fuel tank pressures. Fuel pressure. Here we go. 
fuel rail pressure. Fuel pressure, let's see what these convert to. 44 PSI. Cool. Look at that. We got a bunch of PSI now. So before it was at 80 and the regular fuel pressure was at 60 something. So now we have 435 PSI. I swear it was like a a, a different PID for that. I thought it had like a desired versus expected fuel pressure that wasn't being met. Fuel pressure regulator command. It's just the breeze right there. Fuel pressure regulator control 11%. Fuel rail pressure, fuel pressure, so yeah, we're good, man. I swear I thought it had like a desire versus expected fuel pressure. Um, let's look at our fuel trim again. So yeah, our long term is dropping. Look at our long term is at 2, now it's at 1%. This is perfect. Hey man, this is fixed. We uh, just got back on a test drive. Everything's good. There's no more lean conditions. Very responsive. Uh, I wonder if there's any type of special way of testing this fuel pump, this mechanical pump. But uh, I'm pretty sure the sensor was perfectly fine because obviously, unless the sensor had some issues detecting uh, the variance in the fuel pressure, and uh, I guess the vehicle was capable of compensating or making other adjustments, it would uh, it would cause lean conditions, oh, uh, because it just don't know how to make the uh, determination of of uh, I don't know of 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 if if it's making adequate fuel pressure. This is my conjecture. I mean, I'd imagine it shouldn't need this to determine how to operate the injectors if it can work off of the, the demands of the conditions. Just my thought. I, I'm pretty sure I'm really wrong. Other than that, um, I don't think it's worth testing. I mean, it, it, we got this part pretty cheap online. Um, I think it was around about 100 and something off Rock Auto. But it, it installed very easily. It uh, wasn't so bad, and I will say it did take that full hour and a half. Um, not a, I'm going to take that back. It took an hour less than that for me. I, I, I'll say about 50 minutes. I can usually knock stuff out in dealer time. I'm not that experienced, but you know, I'm shortchanging myself at the moment. Um, so the tools I used was a, was a T27, I want to say. Damn it, don't hold me on that. <laughs> I was already giving out poor information. Um, a 10 millimeter and uh, a assortment of wrenches and uh, extensions and I'm pretty sure anybody can probably do this but I mean I would for the mechanics that are the enthusiasts and don't have to do this for a living I, I would say um, probably let somebody else do it only because of the fuel pressure and I took my chances on pulling that line off with a quick disconnect tool just you know 60 PSI I mean I, I've been sprayed with fuel before I, I'm, I'm aware so my life, my condition, so I mean, I can, it's not going to hurt anything, you know, just taking a line off and doing it in a controlled fashion, but I digress, uh, pulling the fuel line off uh, wasn't so bad, it's just the high pressure side, I mean, what if that, what if it was inaccurate, that sensor, and it had 400 PSI in there, and I go to crack the line, you know, so ain't no telling what will happen, uh, so I guess if anybody had to do this on their own would just be vigilant be very mindful of that high pressure fuel system do it at your own risk but it wasn't that bad uh, again the, the amount of plastic on here is just ridiculous uh, from the water outlet to potentially damaging a coil the breather system uh, the dipstick hell is even plastic I mean I, and I had to lean over on it I mean this car is pretty long so you're gonna have to bend over to get that get access back here and uh, your these plastic uh, pieces are very fragile and I can only imagine having to work on this when this car gets 12 years old you know I, it's it it's just gonna be a nightmare especially that 
outlet down at the bottom. But I ain't gonna hold you up, man. Uh, this this car is not out. I'm gonna go hit the lake, go kayaking and fishing. Uh, since everybody's in a, in the, this country's in disarray, so I need a stress reliever. Other than that, uh, this this coat, this car is simple. Don't stress about it. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that link. Subscribe to the channel. Stay informed. Have that reassurance and work. See you on the next one.